Hi friends, welcome to you all. Today I am going to describe the Watson and Crick double helical model of DNA along with its chemical structure. Watson and Crick proposed double helical model of DNA in 1953 and rewarded by Nobel Prize. First of all, let's see how the DNA is packed inside the chromosome. DNA is tightly packed inside the chromosome as shown in figure. DNA is coiled about core of histone proteins forming nucleosomes. A vast number of nucleosomes organize and coil further to produce chromatin fiber, a higher dimension thread. Such nucleosomes appear as beads on a string and contains eight histone proteins. The DNA segment lying between two adjacent nucleosomes is called linker DNA. Prokaryotes lack histone proteins, hence their DNA is not organized in the form of chromosome. Nucleosome further coils and supercoils extensively and finally forms chromosomes. In DNA, two helices run in 3' prime to 5' prime direction oppositely in an anti-parallel way, forming a solenoid of 20 angstrom or 2 nanometer diameter. Each helices are held together with a specific base pairing, that is, adenine of one strand pairs with thymine of another strand and that of cytosine in one strand pairs with guanine of another strand. This exact base pairing helps to know the sequence of one strand by knowing the another. A complete turn of the helix in DNA is about 34 angstrom or 3.4 nanometer long containing approximately 10 base pairs. That means two adjacent base pairs of a helix are at 3.4 angstrom or 0.3 nanometer apart from each other. In right side you can see the model of DNA with all its constituents atoms along with red colored sugar phosphate backbone. Here you can see a piece of DNA model in the left, a chemical model in the middle and a space filling model in the right. The chemistry of DNA molecule in the middle shows polynucleotide array with a specific base pairing pattern. You can notice the double hydrogen bonds between adenine of one strand with the thymine of another strand. Similarly, there are three hydrogen bonds between guanine of one strand and cytosine of another strand, and vice versa. Here, you can see the chemical structure of a short segment of one helix of DNA. Each DNA helix is a long polynucleotide chain. Each unit, therefore, is a nucleotide. A nucleotide is the unit that contains a central sugar moiety, nitrogen bases, and phosphate groups. Two adjacent nucleotides are joined together by a phosphodiester linkage. Here you can see nitrogen bases, purines, and pyrimidines. Adenine and guanine are purine bases and that of cytosine and thymine are pyramidine bases. There are four different types of nucleotides, adenine, guanine, cytosine, and thymine nucleotides. The name of the nucleotides corresponds with the nitrogen bases they contain. Now it is relevant to understand the chemistry of a nucleotide molecule. Let's have a look at it. Each nucleotide, as shown in figure, has got a central sugar unit, blue, nitrogen base, green, and a phosphate group, yellow. These are bonded together to form a complete nucleotide. Let's have a look at the chemistry of the nucleotides. First of all, the sugars. In your left, there is alpha ribose sugar which is converted into beta ribose sugar that is shown in your right. This conversion is accompanied by conformational change arising due to rotation of H and OS bond present in first carbon position. In the beta conformations, the naming is designed as 1 prime, 2 prime, 3 prime, 4 prime and 5 prime for the five respective carbon atoms. In beta ribose sugar, the hydroxyl group present in 2' prime position may be deoxygenated leaving hydrogen atom behind. 
A ribose sugar is said to be beta ribose if there is hydroxyl group in 2 prime position. It is said to be deoxyribose if there lies only S atom in place of OS. Remember that deoxygenation of OS group can take place from many positions, but in DNA, the deoxyribose sugar with deoxygenation from 2 prime OS group is used. Here you can compare the ribose sugar with hydroxyl group in your right and deoxyribose sugar with S atom in 2 prime position in your left. This is the real difference between the uh, deoxyribose and the ribose sugar. The ribose sugar is the constituent of RNA and deoxyribose sugar is the constituent of DNA. Now, the nitrogen basis. Here are different nitrogen bases present in nucleic acids. At the top, there are three pyramidian bases with single hexagonal ring, cytosine, thymine, and uracil. Thymine is present in DNA only, and uracil is present in RNA only. The cytosine is present in both DNA and RNA. Among these three bases, only two bases are present in DNA, namely thymine and cytosine as a pyramidine base. At the bottom, there are purine bases with their double ring chemistry, the first hexagonal ring and the pentagonal ring. There is adenine in your left and guanine in your right. During specific base pairing, purine group pairs with that of the pyramidine groups by hydrogen burning. The purine group of one strand pairs with the pyramidine group of another strand in DNA double helix in such a way that adenine from purine group combines with that of thymine of pyrimidine group and guanine from purine group combines with that of cytosine from pyrimidine group. Next is phosphoric acid with molecular formula S3PO4. The central phosphorus atom is bonded with three hydroxyl groups on either side by single bond the remaining oxygen atom is bonded by double bond with the central phosphorus atom to produce S3PO4. So you can see different models of S3PO4 in your screen. Now let's see how nucleoside is formed by the union of all these three components, the sugar, the phosphoric acid and the nitrogen bases. First of all, a nucleoside is formed. A nucleoside is formed when deoxyribose sugar combines with nitrogen bases, losing a water molecule as shown in figure. The hydroxyl group of first carbon combines with hydrogen atom of nitrogen base forming water molecule. This is first condensation dehydration reaction to form a nucleoside. After the formation of nucleoside, it is going to combine with the phosphoric acid to form a nucleotide. With the loss of a water molecule, the hydroxyl group of 5' prime carbon combines with the hydroxyl group of phosphoric acid. Uh, water molecules is thus released and an oxygen atom is left behind to join phosphate group to nucleoside, finally forming a complete nucleotide. Now, how two such nucleotides are joined together to form a dinucleotide? Well, Two nucleotides joined together by condensation dehydration reaction with the loss of a water molecule to form a dinucleotide. And a phosphodiester linkage is established between two nucleotides and a dinucleotide is formed. During the formation of a phosphodiester linkage between two nucleotides, the hydroxyl group present in three prime position of first nucleotide combines with the hydroxyl group of S3PO4 of second nucleotide releasing a water molecule. As a consequence, two nucleotides bonded with each other by a phosphodiester linkage. This is third condensation dehydration reaction during the formation of a dinucleotide. The same process of nucleotide addition continues to form a polynucleotide chain. A polynucleotide chain is formed by continuous addition of many nucleotides in a single line. These nucleotide units are sequentially joined together by phosphodiester linkage finally to produce a polynucleotide chain. 
a polynucleotide chain has got one free five prime carbon end and one free three prime carbon end. Therefore, the strand is extended from five prime to three prime direction. Finally, two such polynucleotides were held together oppositely by hydrogen bonds developed between the nitrogen bases of complementary strands. The specific base pairing finally established, forming a DNA double helix. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe my channel. Have a good day.